Good morning. Good morning. Question I've been asking myself a lot lately is, do spiders fart? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you what? see, I've asked about six people and, and that's the response I get from every single one of them. I wasn't expecting that. Since we've been up here in, in Highland Scotland, I've, I've been asking myself a lot of questions like that because it's different, isn't it, up here? I've been asking a lot of questions. This, this morning, <laughs> we're in a sheep field. We've Yes, we are. We are actually in a sheep field. There's been sheep in Scotland for about 6,000 years, believe it or not. Not these ones. <laughs> no, they, these are a bit younger. <laughs> Similarly to 6,000 years ago, they bred today mostly for meat and for milk. And for wool. And for wool. And believe me, wool comes in pretty handy up here in the Highlands. In the winter it does. Especially in the winter months. Now we're here to find out how lambs are made. Well, we know the mechanics, don't we? Yes, it's like, the same with every animal. Like a ram pitches woo to a you. <laughs> then they kind of do the deed. <gasps> you and then, can't do that! And then five months later, train going in a tunnel. And then five months later, kablammy! Out it comes! Kablammy! Yeah, and the ewes are kind of screaming and, and producing lambs and the rams are down the pub having a drink and having a good laugh about it. But anyway... Same. Anyway... <laughs> So today we're going to find out, we're going to actually join in and see which one of us faints first. <laughs> uh, hello, apparently I've got to give you a bit of a warning because as cute as baby lambs can be, they're not that cute when you're watching them being squeezed out of a used nunny. So if you're a bit nesh, bit of a nervous disposition, it might be an idea to go and get a nip of brandy or go and rump bath and come back in about 15, 20 minutes because the scenes that you're about to see could be a little bit unsettling if you've just had your dinner. There, will that do? <laughs> Where we are now on the farm is like the equivalent of the maternity ward on a hospital. Yeah. So just behind you is a, a small field and all the sheep that you can see are pregnant. There's loads of space in there to chill out and get a good old bum scratch. Ooh. Oh, I bet she's loving that. Oh, you like a bum scratch, don't you? And then just behind us is a quieter part of the field and you can see the trees and a little hill there and most of the ewes come into this part to settle down because they can get some privacy yes yeah, settle down and this is where most of them give birth in here so once the the lambs have been born they're given some time together to bond and get all the licky grubby stuff off them yeah clean and, them up and then once they've bonded they're then transferred over to the next field which is like the nursery and that's where all the mums and lambs are and that's a really fun place to be This ewe's been showing all the signs that she's ready to give birth. She wandered over to this quiet corner of the field under the trees a couple of hours ago, and she's been really restless since. She's been getting up and down, walking round in circles, and pawing at the ground, scraping the dirt and the grass. And a few minutes ago, one of her water bags appeared, which means that the lambs come in. If I slow the video down just a little bit, look closely, and you'll actually be able to see the lamb's head in the bag. When everything's going well, the lamb kind of dives out in a streamlined position. It's two front feet and legs, either side of its nose and head, and then its body and hind legs, tucked in behind. If everything's positioned as it should be, and the lamb's not too big, the ewe can usually give birth without any help from us, and gradually the lamb appears. It's wriggling a little bit every now and then, which is a good sign, and then the ewe makes a final push, and out he comes. As soon as he's born, the ewe starts licking him to clean off all the fluids and get the lamb going a bit. Barbara has a quick check to make sure he's fine and then within a few seconds he's, he's moving about himself, taking his first breaths and starting to bond with mum. Yeah. 
It's not long before Mum's got another water bag showing, which means there's another lamb on its way. She's got a job on now, trying to clean up the first lamb at the same time that she's trying to give birth to another one. As the second lamb comes closer, she lays down to do it all again. The first one took about 25 minutes from the water bag appearing to being born. This second one's out like a shot though. It's not too long before both of the new lambs are up on the feet. Just a few minutes, albeit a little bit wobbly to start with, and they're searching for the first meal already. Over in one of the pens, Ellie's worried about one of the other ewes. This one's been kept separate from the others for a while because she developed mastitis, which is it's like an infection and one of the udders got inflamed. She's been getting injections, but this is why she's been kept separate from the other ewes. Now she started her contractions in the early hours of this morning, but she doesn't look to be pushing anymore and there's no sign of a water bag. She does look really uncomfortable and restless too. So Ellie's taken her into the shelter and she's gonna try and find out what's happening. It's not good news. The lamb's not in the right position and that's why the ewes stopped pushing. She can't give birth with the lamb in the position it's in. So Ellie's gonna need to take action straight away to try and get the first lamb out. Otherwise, it's putting this lamb, any others that are in there and the mum at risk. Barbara helps to keep the ewes calm and steady as possible. And Ellie reaches in to try and reposition the unborn lamb. She needs to move his legs and feet to get them out either side of his nose and his head. It's proving tough though, the lamb's front right leg's still behind his head, but Ellie manages to release it and delivers the lamb in the right position. Right, mother, can we get a live lamb? There's a nervous and silent few seconds. We're all just watching as she's trying to revive this newborn lamb. And sadly, despite Ellie's best efforts, the lamb couldn't be saved. It was still past to mum and she cleaned him up. And then Ellie carried on to try and save any other lambs that are inside there. Thankfully, there's two more lambs waiting and both of those are in the right position. So Ellie successfully delivered them both and mum took over the duties cleaning them up. It was really sad to watch this ewe in such a painful birth. And after she'd settled a little bit more with the other two lambs, I asked Ellie what had happened. So really it's just the lamb was positioned wrongly. So what you want a lamb to be positioned as is you want the nose and then two front feet. So like this when they're engaged. Um, but unfortunately the first lamb, it had his head right down. So actually what was engaged was just the neck. So kind of the nape of the neck area. Um, so that's why she wasn't pushing at all because it was kind of the wrong positioning. So what probably happened is in the early hours of the morning, she was ready to lamb and she probably started pushing then. But as she wasn't able to make any progress, that's why she stopped. And that's why when we were looking at her, that, you know, she wasn't doing any kind of the normal signs or pushing. So when we had a feel, we could feel that the lamb was wrong. So then what you want to try and do is with your hands is position it correctly. So then you've got the two legs and you've got the nose. So you can try and pull it out and give birth to it that way. So this one was quite difficult just as I was going in, she was pushing against me as well. So it was just kind of pushing the neck um, further out. So it's a bit of a tricky one. And unfortunately she had been, you know, trying to land for a long time. So that's why that one was still born. As she had been struggling for a while, that's why we then went on land on the two second ones as well, which were positioned normally and very easy to land. So yeah, just bad positioning and that's why she just couldn't do it herself really.
If you'd like to know how the lambs are getting on, head over to our Patreon or YouTube members area where we've published some exclusive footage showing exactly what happened in the week after filming. When we started filming this morning, we had no idea what was going to happen. And it's a bit sad. And when that poor lamb was stillborn and the problems that the, that the ewe is having, we, I was kind of thinking as we were filming, we're not going to show this. And I, I know I did keep filming, but I was like, we can't show this. This is not nice, is it? But it's, it's real life. It is real life. And it's what Barbara and Ellie and every other farmer up and down the land go through every single day yeah things like that it's it's a part of life and as as lovely as it is to see the, Pretty the, little lambs. the fluffy little miracles being born and running about and enjoying new life it's just real that part of life is also death yeah and so we decided to show that just to show that it's not always golden sunsets and bouncy little lambs is it that's right but it's been <laughs> It's been weird because I've never seen a lamb being born before. No, I haven't. And so it's been an experience. And Barbara and Linda and Ellie have been absolutely great and so welcoming. Uh, I mean, thank you for, for inviting us because we always usually bring chaos wherever we go. <laughs> so it, to be fair, it was a bit of a risk for them inviting us over. Yes. Uh, but it's, we've had a fantastic time and we've learned so much. And, and we hope that you've not necessarily enjoyed every part of it, but but... Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, kind enjoyed of it. enjoyed the experience of it. <sighs> it's been a bit different, hasn't it? It has. What are we going to do now? Ooh, I don't know. I fancy an adventure. What about you? Yes. Uh, going, looking for some history. Yes, let's go look for some history. Or owls. I like owls. Shall we go see if we can find some owls? I know where there's some owls. Do you? I know where there's some owls. <laughs> oh. uh, if, you've en if you've enjoyed the vlog, we hope you have. And if you're not already, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, hit the thumbs up button. And if you hit the notifications bell, YouTube will let you know every time we release a brand new video, which is normally every Friday at four o'clock. <laughs> if you'd like to help support the channel and keep us making these, there's a couple of ways you can do it. One is to become a YouTube member and uh, you get loads of exclusive content and perks and bits and pieces like that. Yeah. Or you can join us on Patreon. There's a link up above Sean's head uh, on screen, on most screens, uh, if you want to have a look at that. Or you could just stash a lot of cash in a brown envelope. <laughs> there's other ways you you can support the channel too, they're down in the video description uh, if you fancy having a look at that. <laughs> Have you had a good day? I've had a brilliant day. Are you ready for your tea? I'm ready for some fish and chips. Oh yes, we'll see you next time. Take care of yourself, bye bye. Ta -ra.